Good evening and welcome. You're watching The Big Story on NDTV Profit and I'm Nupur Talwar Suri. Over the past four days, bomb hoax threats have kept airlines, flyers, as well as security agencies on tenterhooks. Just sample the numbers that we are looking at. There have been 18 bomb hoaxes in just four days. Six airlines have been targeted. Uh, they were operating flights on nine international and nine domestic routes. Apart from that, uh, what we also understand is that the sheer number of threats that have come in have not only been unprecedented, but they have also uh, put security agencies as well as airports into a tizzy. Today on The Big Story, we look at what's happening in this space and we also look at how the government is dealing with these threats. There is talk of a new law that will be coming into place which will put in stringent measures. But first up, we go across to our reporters on the show. Pallav as well as Aditya are joining us uh, this evening and Aditya of course has been tracking this story over the past four days. Hi Aditya. To begin with Aditya, uh, give us a sense of what we've seen in these past four days. Now today of course we've also heard that there have been so action taken against social media handles. Uh, the government is looking at perhaps putting in place measures. Uh, various agencies have been in a huddle. Uh, so tell us the whole picture. Yes, yes, Nupur. So basically, before I start, let me tell you, uh, just now an information is coming in that five of Air India flights have also received bomb threats very recently today. And uh, because of this, the flight, disrupt uh, flight operations have been disrupted once again. So now uh, the total number has increased to over 20 flights in last four days. And this is something unprecedented. This has never happened before. And uh, let me tell the viewers that what we have been tracking for last four days is that uh, basically uh, some social media handles which are X, uh, handles on X are basically tweeting out the flight numbers with threats and after this the flights are being uh, taken to the nearest airports and in the isolation base and flights are being checked thoroughly but nothing is being found so these threats are essentially hoax threats because of which the flights are being diverted and uh, I repeat the number has crossed or, uh, to 20 flights in last four days and this is across airlines this is not just limited to one airline uh, yesterday in Mumbai uh, Mumbai police had conducted a press conference in which they revealed that one of these tweets uh, was made by a, a miner from Rajnandgaon in Chhattisgarh. Uh, a small team of uh, Mumbai police had gone to Rajnandgaon and uh, uh, taken this uh, miner in uh, their custody. And uh, the, they are questioning the miner right now. And uh, also, uh, one more important point in this is that one major is also involved in this because um, the miner had made these posts from the major's handle. Now, the entire investigation is underway. Government has, uh, has swung in action. Uh, Home Ministry is involved. Uh, aviation Ministry is looking after the matter tomorrow civil aviation ministry is poised to make a statement so everything is uh, right at the front uh, all the action all the departments are in complete action right now and we'll have to see how this story unfolds but as it is right now uh, the threats are not stopping all right, uh, Aditya, do stay with us. We're going to come back to you later in the show. Let's also get in Pallav now. Pallav, the government and various ministries, of course, have been in a huddle and have now suggested uh, a new law to deal with hoax scholars. Tell us a bit more about uh, this law that is likely to come into place. पिछले कई दिनों से देश के अलग-अलग हिस्सों में हवाई अड्डों और विमानों को बम से उड़ाने की धमकी के मामले सामने आ रहे हैं। इसको लेकर अब नागरिक उड़ान मंत्रालय भी सख्त हो गया है। मंत्रालय से जुड़े सूत्रों की माने तो मंत्रालय अब प्रॉक्सी कॉल करने वालों के खिलाफ एक नया कानून भी तैयार कर रहा है। इस कानून में विमानों की सुरक्षा और संचालन से जुड़े झूठे और ब्राह्मक कॉल करने वालों के खिलाफ कड़ी सजा का प्रावधान है। इतना ही नहीं मंत्रालय जुड़े सूत्रों की माने तो इसमें जो लोग भ्रामक कॉल्स करेंगे उनके लिए कड़ी सजा तो दी ही जाएगी इसके अलावा उनकी पहचान करके उनको नो फ्लाइट लिस्ट में डाला जाएगा जो पाबंदी कई वर्षों तक लागू रह सकती है मंत्रालय जुड़े सूत्रों की माने तो जो नया कानून होगा वो यात्रा में बाधा और राष्ट्रीय सुरक्षा को खतरे में डालने वाली घटनाओं को रोकने के लिए सख्त निगरानी और पारदर्शिता भी सुनिश्चित करेगा मौजूदा समय में इस कानून को लेकर मंत्रालय लॉ विभाग के साथ परामर्श कर रहा है आपको बता दें कि इससे पहले इन घटनाओं को देखते हुए 
केंद्र सरकार ने भी विमानों और हवाई अड्डों पर स्काई मार्शल की संख्या भी दोगुनी करने का ऐलान किया था All right, Pallav. Thank you very much for joining us. Now that brings us to the three big questions that we are asking this evening: Is there a larger conspiracy behind the hoax uh, bomb threats to airlines? That's the first one that we will be examining. The second big question: Does the proposed new law have enough teeth to curb these threats? And thirdly, how hard has the aviation industry been hit by these three? Uh, these bomb threats which have by the way now gone up to 18 in the past 4 days and uh, to discuss all this and more we're now joined by captain uh, amit singh is the founder of safety matters foundation we are also joined by mr brijesh singh he's uh, the principal secretary to the chief minister of maharashtra uh, an ips officer by cadre uh, we also have jitendra bhargav he's the former ed and of air india and the author of the descent of air india Uh, joining us as well as group captain uh, MG Augustine uh, Vinod uh, all three uh, all four of you gentlemen good evening thank you very much for joining us uh, uh, mr singh uh, that is mr brijesh singh to you first it does appear that there may have been a larger conspiracy behind this uh, because the sheer number that we are seeing and it's growing by the hour if i were to use uh, that term uh, it 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 may seem that there's more to it than meets the eye what's your assessment Yes, too early to say that. Sometimes uh, these things are motivated by copycat behavior. Now, as far as the larger conspiracy angle is concerned, you need to basically see behind uh, the motivations of the threat actor, whether it's a geopolitical actor, whether it's a non-state actor, whether it's a criminal element. So you will have to uh, see once investigation starts, and uh, our, our agencies are good at that. If there is something which is connecting everything, it would come out. Uh, i would also like to say that there's a lot of technology today which is used in analysis so there may be elements from uh, you know online forum uh, for our there would be uh, calls and there would be various kinds of telemetry data once you analyze all that i think a pattern would come up and if at all there is a larger conspiracy it will come through however what i feel that uh, we should not take them just as hoax calls because every hoax can be real and once a call is made no airline can take it as hoax no, no airline can presume that it is hoax a, a proper protocol kicks in place and you have to take all measures and one last point upar i'd like to make uh, before other speakers talk is that uh, there is an act called uh, anti hijacking act of 2016 which has made stringent provisions which go up to life imprisonment and one has to be very careful so anybody who is you know getting into this copycat behavior they should understand that there there are very stringent punishments after the 2016 anti hijacking act hey, uh mr singh before i go on to the other speakers uh, just give us a sense of what an unprecedented situation like this involves for security agencies on the ground because uh, uh, there, there there's not just these hoax calls but there's also the entire protocol that's involved after that see this is what terrorism does to you is that it it takes a toll on your resources it keeps you on continuous alert and it basically tires you down it is basically uh, an attack on uh, you know the public order and i believe that uh, once a call is made it has to be treated with great seriousness so you will have to isolate you will have to you know do all kinds of checks right from baggage to people to the flight manifest to uh, all technical you know maybe explosive checks everything has to be checked and this is expensive time consuming and i think that is the purpose of the attacker is that they want to put you through these situations wherein uh, it it can sometimes be also for testing and they may be even testing by making hoax calls and then they may come up with you know a real attack so i believe that whatever is happening uh, people will get to the agencies will get to the you know bottom of it and uh, the perpetrator is brought to uh, book nupur right absolutely uh, mr bhargav uh, to you next now mr bhargav for airlines situations like this can actually lead to a hefty financial bill you know there are diversions involved there are disruptions uh, involved and all of this is just costly so give us a sense of uh, uh what this could mean for airlines financially well financially is one doesn't have to look at when it concerns safety i've always maintained that safety is paramount 
an airline will divert flight and land at the nearest airport once a, once a call is received that there is something untoward that can likely happen. Now, when you have it in this way and a plane lands at this thing, it's a question of subjecting the aircraft, the passengers, the baggages, that whether the call has any meaning or not. And if it's a hoax call, we proceed further, which means inconvenience to passengers. And if it's a long time on the ground, then perhaps taking care of the meals and taking care of accommodation, all that thing is feasible. The third part is that it disrupts flights, not just this flight, the further flight that aircraft is supposed to operate. So there's a very different kind of a thing at times the duty time limitation of pilots can come in. The plane can be made to be grounded for the next 24 hours because you can't really position a set of new crew to operate the flight, safety being paramount. But as the government of India has in the past 24 hours, fortunately, taken the matter seriously, and we were expecting that perhaps today there will be no instance of a hoax call, but it is. People, when you talk in terms of a conspiracy, let's look at some. We have been in the first three flights relating to a boy from Rajnangao. He has been in police custody. He would have been subjected, grilled by now to understand whether he did it as a prank or was it there was any, any seriousness attached. So when we look at these elements and they say, how is it that the first call by this juvenile person led to multiple calls subsequently? And when it happened, what happened? Now, government, of course, is talking about punitive action, that putting them on no-fly list and various other things. But is that enough? That's the question to be asked. Uh, the question again, as you yourself said, is that enough? Is that going to stop something like this? Uh, well, only time will tell after the investigation is completed. I wanted to bring in uh, Group Captain Vinod into this. Group Captain Vinod, you know, of course, uh, we may say that safety is the most important point, but when there are repeated hoax calls, finances also do become a concern. Now, in this particular, you know, four days, we've had about nine international routes that have uh, been targeted. Now, what has also happened is that in case, uh, in two cases particularly, fighter jets from Singapore and Canada had actually uh, to be scrambled. And uh, this was essentially to make sure that the passengers these aircrafts were carrying were safe. So explain to our viewers how, uh, you know, does uh, one manage an evo evolving situation like this? Uh, and uh, obviously, this does uh, create, as all our panelists have uh, spoken, a, a great sense of fear amongst flyers. Great question, uh, Nupur. And uh, as you started the show, uh, when he was uh, when he was speaking to your reporters, is the time AI one two nine, the uh, Mumbai bound flight from London, was returning back and just touched down at London as we speak, and probably one of the victim to one of the folks calls. Here, yeah, what I wanted to put in perspective, Nupur, is uh, uh, the. Um, the previous speaker spoke about the aspect of hijack. Uh, not many people know, uh, probably well before many of us were born. Between Cuba and United States, in a matter of a couple of years, there were 86 hijacks. Everyone who took, took off from Cuba landed in the US, and there were no stringent international rules for hijack. So people would hijack, land in U.S., and seek asylum. And nothing would prevent U.S. from not looking at these people or the pilots and the co-pilots from seeking asylum. And some of them got asylum, and some of them are today the uh, citizens of the United States. That is when there was a hole in the procedure that was noticed, and the first protocol of hijack started to put in place and put in play that kept revising till uh, the uh, SLPC, the secondary ladder point check and all started post uh, the Lockerbie incident, which killed so many people. So what happens is every now and then, a certain uh, dichotomy or a certain uh, hole in the SOP is exposed by the environment. And one such hole is this the solution to this problem does not lie in India, Nupur. The solution to this problem lies on the tables of IKO, the International Civil Aviation Organization. 
they have to wake up. And what is noticed normally is they wake up when something happens in Europe or America. When something happens in uh, the you know African regions or Asian region, they normally don't wake up. Another example I'll give you, there was an um, African uh, uh, captain who, when a first officer uh, left to the left to uh, you know go to the loo, committed suicide. They did nothing about it till there was another pilot in German wings committed suicide is the time they woke up. And then they said, whenever any of the pilot goes, one of the cabin crew has to leave the cockpit. So mm. this rule came about because there was a gaping hole in the system. Absolutely. The current gaping hole in the system is anyone with a Twitter account sitting anywhere in the world can cause problem. And what will you do? How will you put him in no-fly list if he's not flying right. with you at all? So, so, so what you're saying, asked. so what you're saying at this point is that uh, obviously we are looking at the uh, the situation in a very narrow manner. Even though this may be a much larger problem that we are dealing with, I'm going to come back to you, Group Captain. Uh, let me also bring in Captain uh, Captain Amit Singh. He's the founder of Safety Matters. In fact, he did join us yesterday as well. Thank you very much for taking out the time today as well. Uh, one thing that's been, uh, you know, coming to my mind again and again is the timing of it. Look at uh, the timing. It's right in the middle of the festive season. Uh, there are an increased number of flyers who want to go meet their families. So uh, what's happening in a sense is that there is a greater sense of fear. There is a greater sense of chaos. And obviously, uh, whoever's behind this is managing to get a lot of attention. Uh, what do you make of it? Well, that is why uh, if anything happens on a bus or a train, it will not grab enough media attention. So people who are motivated to do so target the civil aviation because of primarily the media attention. That is one thing which is uh, well known and well documented. Here, I would also like to say that even though uh, the rules are basic, but what ICAO and everybody else has moved on to is the risk assessment. Earlier, everything was black and white. You could either do something or not do something. But now it is upon risk assessment. Risk assessment has to be based on your current information and uh, whatever inputs are coming from uh, various sources. So uh, by stringent laws, yes, you can punish a person. That can be a deterrent, but how to prevent Another uh, series of bomb hoax happening or threats happening, that has to be uh, dealt with in a different manner. Uh, you have to train your people how to take decisions, how to analyze the risk, which I doubt uh, there has been uh, uh, much happening because uh, we looked at the safety management system, which is prevalent, and that has not been successful as far as uh, uh, the civil aviation is concerned. Similarly, for security, we have a security management system, which is primarily based on the risk assessment. If you have a threat, then you have to segregate it into a minor threat or a major threat. So your action will depend on that. So we cannot continue to take the same action, which is divert every flight, stop every flight, evacuate passengers. Even for a minor or a threat, we know that is a low-level threat or non-specific threat. So and the bomb threat uh, assessment committee has to be well trained. It has to have inputs from AI like uh, the stand uh, uh, in 22, July 22, a teenager traveling from UK to Spain uh, just put on a Snapchat about uh, a bomb threat or a hijack, possible hijack. That was just a joke. And uh, the security agencies monitoring the Wi-Fi at Gatwick picked him up as soon as he landed in Spain. So that is the speed at which they need to act rather than uh, uh, sitting quiet because there's not been any statement issued by the ministry or the PCAS right. assuring the passengers that our system is safe. There has been an audit in August uh, 24 by IKO, security audit. So when you have undergone an audit, mm. are you not sure? 100% sure that uh, nothing can happen here or likelihood. Everything works on likelihood or probability. The probability is very low when you have undergone such a strict audit by IKO. Mm. So uh, an assuring statement to the passengers 
So what about that? So okay. so many passengers are traveling. So uh, with these news, panic is spreading and nobody's doing anything about it. In fact, so that is a bigger question. In fact, you know, even as we are talking about this, uh, we are given to understand uh, that the civil aviation minister has uh, issued a statement. We are just going to cut across to what he said, and then I'm going to come back to all of you on your assessment of how this is going to go forward. So we are ensuring that these kind of uh, fake bomb threats don't happen in the future and any change in rules or uh, change in legislation we are thoroughly pursuing from our department also so that uh, it becomes a strict barrier for people who are trying to do these kind of uh, prank uh, uh, things. And also uh, the police are, all, are uh, pursuing the cases and uh, trying to find out who are behind this and in fact the uh, Home Affairs is also helping us a lot in that area. Uh, other than that, whatever needs to be done, because airlines are also feeling a lot of uh, inconvenience, including the passengers also. Right, Mr. Brijesh Singh, you just heard the minister over there saying uh, that we do need to put in place uh, perhaps newer laws, uh, perhaps more stringent action. What is your sense of how do we take this forward from here? See, as a law enforcement officer, I think our primary difficulty arises when we need information from either social media platforms or information which does not reside in our boundaries. So while for incident sharing, there is something called traffic light protocol where uh, information is being shared between you know, aviation agencies and uh, agencies across the world. However, when it comes to social media platforms or telcos or any such uh, you know, organizations, then we have serious issues. I believe that there should be a modicum of platform responsibility wherein uh, whatever platform it is should take stringent measures that these things are detected by whatever, if they want to use an AI, if they want to use ML, whatever they want to use, they should see to it that threats are not made using platforms. Apart from that, for investigation, anti-forensic measures are used uh, by these people like VPN. And um, I understand that for, for uh, you know, um, for democracy at places, for activism at places, for uh, you know individual privacy, uh, these technologies are essential. But when these become a threat to larger public security, you will need to have measures where you would need to get information from, let's say, VPN service providers, from social media uh, platforms, from telcos. And if we can get this uh, information in real time, as one of the speakers was telling, then only we would be able to uh, put a lid to all these things, whether they are hoax calls or whether they are real threats. No point. Absolutely. So those are perhaps some measures that could be looked at. Any uh, final thoughts, Mr. Bhargava, on this, on uh, what is the need of the hour uh, to deal with this threat? You know, the minister made a statement and we all heard. He talked about the inconvenience, cost to passengers, the airline, and the punitive action that you will be taking against the people who are pranksters. But the reality is, what are we doing to ensure that no such calls are made and how fast can we reach the origin of these messages? Only then can you catch people. We can't be talking of punitive action against them unless we know how to catch them and how to prevent them. The focus in my, of course, he's Minister of Civil Aviation, but let the Home Ministry come out and say, well, we have a problem on hand, and this is what we are doing, and this is what how we will go about and catch them. The sense of confidence has to be put in, in the airlines that, look, we are, grab we are going to catch them, and we are on track to do it. Now, when you look at, say, the last four days that we are talking about, first instance, we know about it. Second, the three, first three instances, responsible, one man is responsible. Take from the fourth onward. Now, what have we done in the last 72 hours? Now, that's where is it? it can't be that the social media, which are being used by them to give these head calls, we can't reach them. One, of course, Mr. Bridges very rightly said, to prevent it, get them people to look at it. But the reality is that we need to be acting very fast. Mr. Amit Singh made a statement that how on his plane, within hours that the plane landed, you could catch him. Yes. Now, can't we have that kind of speed with us? This is a very serious matter. Absolutely. Now, it's not just a financial loss that we'll talk about inconvenience of passengers. To hmm. me, the bigger question is, how do we get to the culprit in the shortest possible time? And that's the challenge before our investigating agencies.
Absolutely. Uh, Captain Amit Singh, uh, you were talking about the challenges uh, that we are facing and obviously everybody seems to agree that the need of the hour perhaps is quicker detection, uh, quicker uh, uh, management of the situation also perhaps. Any final thoughts uh, before I bring in Aditya, uh, who in fact uh, is going to speak about the pilot protocols that are in place in a situation like this? See, in the modern world, <clears throat> there are systems available like natural language pro processing, uh, text matching, and uh, you check the sentiment, emotion of the person, machine learning, pattern recognition, anomaly detection, uh, data fusion, predictive analysis. So this all combined can give you an assessment of uh, how realistic the threat is. So you cannot treat everything as uh, a big threat, like play safe and uh, put all aircrafts down, evacuate the passengers. And secondly, I would like to say that uh, in Europe, a scramble costs about $103,000. Right. So mm. that is charged to the person who is caught. Right. Uh, and every diversion, which was calculated way back uh, by FA, translates to about uh, between 70000 to 1 crore. Every okay. time an aircraft diverts, depending on the size of the aircraft and the route they are flying. So that is a kind of uh, uh, finances or the financial hit that we are looking at. Okay. So it is... If we invest that amount into predictive analysis on the modern technology, I'm sure that we would be on top of right. things. Right. Uh, I'm afraid, uh, gentlemen, I'm completely out of time. Thank you very much for joining us on the broadcast, all of you. Uh, quick word from Aditya. Aditya, just tell us what are the protocols in place uh, for a pilot who's dealing with this issue like this? Before I begin, a quick uh, update that uh, as we speak, two more Indigo flights have got these uh, bomb scares and uh, uh, this issue is not stopping. Now, let me get down uh, to the pilot protocols uh, when such a scare happens. Basically, what a pilot, according to DGCA uh, civil aviation requirement, what a pilot actually has to does is to, he has to basically, the pilot has to declare the full emergency on the flight and then the flight is diverted to nearest military or civil aviation airport uh, where the flight is landed and after that uh, all the passengers and the crew members are disembarked from the flight and flight is thoroughly checked these uh, passengers who have been disembarked the crew members who have been disembarked are taken to the aerodrome and uh, they are kept in a safer place and then after all the security checks it is only then the flight is allowed to take off for the further journey or then it uh, it remains with the authorities to decide that what could be the further solution but uh, when a flight makes a landing mm. as we have been uh, told in our uh, previous discussions uh, it is an expense of nearly 50 to 60 lakh rupees per domestic flight this is all right, uh, Aditya, thank you for that. Uh, well, uh, with that, it is a wrap on the big story. Uh, we are, of course, continuously receiving more threats. Uh, uh, and uh, agencies, of course, are dealing uh, with it. There's also going to be a new law that is uh, likely going to be put in place uh, to deal with this unprecedented situation that Indian flyers and airlines are having to face. Thank you very much for joining us on The Big Story this evening.